The median is the middle term. The median equals the middle. The word median even sounds like the word medium, which means kind of in the middle, right? So that's how we can remember it. Median equals the middle term. Let's just give this a bit more context. If we wanted to find the median income of a country, we would have to line up all the people in that country in order of their income. Then we find the middle person in that long line and ask them, what's your income? That would be the median income. That makes it very different from the mean. The mean income or the mean in general can often be skewed by really big incomes or really outlier results. The median is far less skewable. But if the median is that simple, what's the point of a whole video on it? Well, depending on the context, there are three different ways of finding the median. And for the GRE and the GMAT, you need to know all of them. I mean, it's not like a life-saving skill. If you're in the desert, it's not gonna help you to know the median, but for these tests, it's definitely gonna help you. Let's start with finding the median in a situation you're probably very familiar with. This is the disordered list. Can you find the median of four, 17, 12, seven, 13, seven, and eight. Hopefully you remembered that we have to put the list in ascending order before we find the median. One of the most common mistakes with medians is to not put a disordered list in order before we find the middle term. So your first job is to put these numbers in order, in ascending order, going up from smallest to biggest. We can't just pick the middle number and say, boom, that's our median. That's why seven is not the median here, just because it's the middle number. Putting these numbers in order, we get four, seven, seven, eight, 12, 13, and 17. And just visually, you can see for those seven numbers, the eight sits right in the middle. If you didn't spot that, you can cross out the smallest number in the list and the biggest number in the list in pairs, crossing out two in one go. If you keep doing that, you'll be left with a single number or a pair of numbers in the middle. When there's an odd number of terms, as we have here, you'll be left with a single number in the middle. When there's an even number of terms, by crossing off the smallest and the biggest each time in pairs, you'll be left with a pair of terms. So what do we do if there's a pair of terms left over? Take this list, 60, 62, 67, 64, 65, and 69. What's the median? We can't visually see a middle term this time because there are six numbers, which is an even number of terms. And if we cross out the biggest and the smallest in pairs, we're gonna be left with a pair of numbers in the middle. First, did you remember to put the numbers in ascending order? For those of you who forgot that, you can hang your head in shame. I'm just kidding. Everyone forgets that once in their life, at least. If you reorder the list, we have 60, 62, 64, 65, 67, and 69. The two terms in the middle are 64 and 65, so the median would be halfway between those two terms, which you might be able to mentally just spot is 64.5. Halfway between 64 and 65 is 64.5. If you couldn't spot that, the way to find the median between the two middle terms is to add them up and divide by two. Imagine we were left with 37 and 72 as our two remaining middle terms. What would the actual median be? We would add up 37 plus 72. Let's do this together in our heads. 37 plus 70 is 107 plus two is 109. And now we're gonna half that. To half 109, we halve the 100 and then halve the nine. Half of 100 is 50, half of nine is 4.5. So we have 54.5. 54 54.5 would be the median in that case. Halfway between 37 and 72 is 54.5. Add them up and then divide by two. So that's the main most common way of finding the medians put the numbers in ascending order and then find the middle term. And if there are two middle terms, you add them up and divide by two to find the real median. But there are other ways, harder ways, more advanced ways 
that you can be asked to find the median. What about a consecutive list? For example, what is the median of all the positive odd integers that are less than 75? This kind of question came up in my test, so I want you to know how to handle it. First, why is that a consecutive list? Because all the terms are going up by a set amount. Odd integers always go up by two. 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. So any time numbers go up by a set amount, so for example going up by 1 consecutive integers, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or going up by 2 or going up by 5, for example multiples of 5, 5, 10, 15. In any of those situations we have a consecutive list. The difference in each case is always the same. That's why it's called consecutive. So when we have a consecutive list how do we find the middle term? It's going to take way too long to write out all the terms and cross off the biggest and the smallest in pairs until we get to the middle. That takes way too long. So what do we do? We use this formula. You do the biggest plus the smallest term and then divide by two. That will give you the median term of a consecutive list. Biggest plus smallest divide by two. So in our example, what's the biggest odd integer that's less than 75. That would be 73. And the smallest positive odd integer is one. So we do one plus 73, that's 74. And then we divide by two. Again, let's show off our dividing by two skills. Half of 74 is half of 70, which is 35, and half of four, which is two. 35 plus 2 is 37. So the median positive odd integer that's less than 75 is 37. But I am now going to give you the most interesting fact of this entire video. Did you know that for any consecutive list, the median equals the mean? Mind blown. So few people realize that. Finding the mean is a nightmare. You have to add them all up and divide by how many terms usually. So if you can just learn this simple fact that the median equals the mean when the lists are consecutive, that can save you a huge amount of time. For example, if we wanted to find the mean positive odd integer less than 75, all we'd need to do is find the median, which we saw was 37, and that's it. That is also the mean. Just to demonstrate how amazing this is, imagine I ask you to find the mean of all the numbers from 10 to 99. Well, adding them all up and then dividing by how many terms there are would take a while. So instead, we're going to find the median, the middle term, and then just realize that that equals the mean. How do we find the median again in a consecutive list? We do the smallest plus the biggest divide by two. So 10 is the smallest number in that range, plus 99, that's 109, divided by two, half of 100 is 50, half of nine is 4.5, so 54.5. 54.5 is not only the median of all the integers between 10 and 99, it's also the mean, because in a consecutive list, the mean always equals the median. If this video has taught you anything so far, please do hit that like button, and leave a comment or question down below. It just massively helps to promote the video to others. And don't forget to subscribe if you liked the video at all. Now, I know you are probably overwhelmed by all the new learning you're doing, but I want to show you one more way of calculating the median. It involves finding the medianth or middle person. Let's say I presented you with this table giving you the salary ranges of 25 people. On the left, we have the salary ranges, and on the right, we have the frequency, which is the number of people in that range. My question to you is, what is the median salary of this group of people? At this point, you might realize that neither our first method or our second method is that good in this situation. Listing out all the salaries in ascending order would take too much time, and we don't really have a consecutive list, so we can't use our second method either. So here is the third and final way of calculating the median. By the way, the answer is not 40,000 to 60,000 simply because that's the middle row. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. To calculate the median, you need to focus on how many people there are. There are 25 people. 
So we're going to need to find the medianth or middle person first, and then we can find the actual median. So who's the middle person? You can't just divide the total by two. 25 divided by two, 12.5. It doesn't work like that. You have to do this weird, cool trick. You add one first and then divide by two. So if there are 25 people, we do 25 plus one, which is 26, then divide by two to get 13. So the 13th person is our medianth person. Now I'm sure you're thinking, why do we have to add one before we divide by two? Well, take a simple example. Imagine there are three people and I asked you, who's the middle person? You would turn to me and say, well, it's the second person, right? He's the one just standing in the middle, so he must be the median, and that's right. But if we just did three divided by two, we would get 1.5. So it doesn't work just to divide by two immediately. We have to add one first and then divide by two. Three plus one is four, four divided by two is two giving us our second person is the medianth person. Just quickly, what happens if when we divide by two, we get a decimal? So imagine there are 24 people who would be the medianth person. 24 plus one is 25 and half of 25 is 12.5. So the median would be halfway between the 12th person and the 13th person. You'd have to add them both up and then divide by two. Add up the two salaries in this case and then divide by two. But here we're fine, there's 25 people. So we add one to get 26, divide by two to get 13. So the 13th person is our middle person. Now, what salary does that 13th person have? You can either count down from the top or count up from the bottom. It doesn't matter, you'll get the same end result. Can you see what row the 13th person would be in. Well, our first row has six people and our second row has seven people. Six plus seven is indeed 13. So our 13th person is the last person in that second row. So his or her salary is between 20,001 and 40,000. That is the median salary. We don't just find the medianth person or the middle person, we then go across and find out what his or her salary is. That is the median salary. So when you have a group of people and you want to find the median, you have to first find out who the middle person is by adding one to the number of people and then dividing by two. Once you've found who the middle person is, you then find out that person's salary or whatever the question is. That will be your median salary. And there we have it. Pretty much everything you need to know for the GRE and the GMAT concerning medians. Hope you like that. Hope you learned something. And of course, if you did, please leave a comment. If you've got a question, please leave a question. And also don't forget to have a wonderful day.